All right, good evening, everyone. We're live tonight from Kelly Automotive Park as the Butler Blue Sox continue their homestand with a fireworks night here against the West Virginia Miners. Blue Sox come in uh, off a loss last night against Kokomo 4-3. I'm Jaron Steele, joined by Hugh O'Neill. Uh, Hugh, close one last night. Uh, maybe a hit here or a hit there. They, they're in the win column, but that's baseball. It doesn't go your way. Uh, but they've had the minors number so far this summer going 5-1 and one against them uh, in the early season. Yeah, well, a big story coming from that is all the new players that these Blue Sox are bringing in. And last night in Zach Henderson uh, pitching, I believe. And uh, I went to school with him. I actually played with him. Pretty good ball player. Uh, he... He had an okay outing, uh, five innings, five hits, five runs. That makes his ERA nine. I'm sure he'll, he'll get that down, but, you know, one start, what are you going to do about that? Ladies so some, some players also, we, another player, Wyatt Doherty, coming in. Uh, I talked to him before the game, another friend of mine, probably going to be seeing him later in action today. Yeah, and uh, the Miners come in the winners of two straight. They swept Terre Haute. In a Thursday Friday series to improve to seven and nine. They're actually playing pretty well. They were one and five after the first week, so they've been six and four over their last ten. The Blue Sox are eight and eight on the summer, and two games behind the Chillicothe Paints, who lead the division at ten and six. And then you got the uh, Champion City in between them at eight and seven. We're at the, about the quarter four of the season here. Uh, we're actually, well, we're past the quarter four, almost to the one third mark of the season. Um, so it's going by pretty quickly. Yeah, it's amazing how fast this goes by. But Blue Sox will turn to Jake Stout on the Hill tonight, right hander from the University of Toledo. And he is making his second start of the summer. Yeah, last time I was actually announcing with you, it was this same pitching matchup. and. A thing you notice with the lineups, these these teams are still getting their players back from college. So the last time, a couple weeks ago, when these teams played, the lineups are not anywhere close to what they were. So you really don't know what to expect going on previous games. Uh, well, we'll give you the minors uh, lineup batting order of this evening. Uh, leading off will be number 25, Ryan Schul, followed by number 23, Justin Mitchell. As you said those are two guys we haven't seen so far. The three hitters, number seven, Austin Norman, followed by Mick Dan Ward, number six, where uh, will be the DH tonight. Then it'll be number 21, Eddie Gonzalez, and then Kyle Bergeron after him. Chad Ramsey will bat seventh and wear number 14. Jeffrey Christen will bat eighth and wear number 34. And Cody Callaway will bat ninth and wear number 12. The pitcher for them is Brandon Nyland. We'll talk a little bit more about him in the bottom half. The defense for the Blue Sox, Golikowski behind the plate, Ferguson at first, Magalione at second, Meeker at third, Parks at short, Gunn in left, Murphy in center, and Scott in right. First pitch from Stout is a called strike, and that's right on the month, 7.05, and it's about 88 degrees here and humid. It's a very hot one, indeed. Ch chopper, two first, Ferguson will take it to the bag himself, one away. Can't complain about that start for the Blue Sox, getting that quick out. That's what pitch, uh, pitchers love those. Yeah, Stout will now face Mitchell. As you said, these are two guys we haven't seen before. Um, but I think the Blue Sox got to see them down there earlier this week when they played Tuesday and Wednesday down in Beckley. Blue Sox in their throwback Yankees. The Miners are wearing a camo green ensemble. Called strike to the left-handed hitting Mitchell. Mitchell from Longwood University. And he grounds one just past the diving Magloon out in the shallow right. A one-out single. Yeah, he, he dove for that. It got his glove, but he could just not strap that uh, just going past. A yeah, good effort, but nothing... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, nothing to be shamed about it. He, he laid out for it, just uh, just eluded him. And here now is Austin Norman. Norman is from, uh, excuse me, he's from uh, Fairmount State, which is down in West Virginia. He takes a called strike. Umpires tonight, Justin Murphy behind the play. Jason Smith is working the bases. Pickoff throw. 
Mitchell dies back without a tag. The one, hard hit grounder to short, and it bounces off of Parks out in the center field. And now they're gonna go with a throw to third, and the ball skips around, and that allows the other runner to move up to second. That's probably one where you just throw that one into the middle infield and keep the runners at first and third. Very odd, usually with this field, infield being all turf, usually the balls don't take bad hops and the infielders can get a good read on it. Um, that This play just not being the case. That is an E6 on Parks. And now runners on second and third. Stout checks the runner at second, and here's the pitch. It's high to Big Dan Ward. Finally joining his minors teammates for the summer. He has, he's been a thorn in the side of anybody who's trying to face him in the prospect league over the last couple of years. And in college this year, he hit 21 bombs. He's a, he's just a pure power hitter, but he's also a good hitter all around. He's one of the toughest outs in this league. 2-0 is up and in, so now Stout in trouble. He's one pitch away from loading the bases. Uh, called strike. Ward taking all the way. In fact, he almost stepped out of the box. Just wanted to watch that one. Yeah. <laughs> Times like that where the umpire is pretty much going to call a strike no matter what if he steps out. 3-1, grounder to second. This would get this will get a run in, but it's also an out. 4-3, Maglion goes to Ferguson to retire Ward. RBI scores now batting for the minors, the Mitchell, and, and it's and West Virginia 1, Butler nothing. Norman uh, moves to third. After that good, good one out on the first batter and show just uh, some defensive miscues you could say and ha help move the runners over well I gotta give Dan Ward credit he, mm -hmm. he he put that ball into the spot of the infield even though he made an out he, 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 he was productive in doing so hitting that to the right side of the infield uh, chopper is a fair ball and it's scooped up just on the line by Ferguson he goes to the bag that tag it and that will end the, the inning. One the run comes in on one, one, one hit and one error and there was one man left on base. All right, we'll talk, give you the Blue Sox batting order in the bottom half. Leading off is number 10, the center fielder Tanner Murphy, followed by the shortstop number 13, Pavin Parks. Calvin Scott will bat third, where number eight play right, followed by the cleanup hitter, the third baseman, number 19, James Meeker. Brady Gulikowski will bat fifth, play catcher, and where number 22, followed by number 41, the first baseman, Patrick Ferguson. And the designated hitter today, Christian Webb, will wear number 24 and bat seventh. And then the eight man will be the second baseman, number 21, Damian Maglione. And Joe Gunn will bat ninth, wear number 23 and play left field. And they will face Brandon Nyland uh, from Indiana University of Southeast. They've seen this guy once and they, they hit him pretty well here uh, opening weekend. Yeah, you're right, and uh, hopefully Blue Sox will be ever be able to do that again. Nylon, he has started two games, one of which being with the against the Blue Sox. 13 inning pitch, 18 hits, ZRA is 4.84, which is pretty respectable for this league. You know, can't really complain about that. Well, as he warms up, Murphy's going to try to time him up. Our Friday morning night brought to you by the Butler Armco Credit Union. Thank you for doing that. And we're we'll down by the catcher. Set the defense for the Miners here. Kristen is behind home plate. Mitchell is at first. Berg Bergeron is at second. Ramsey at third. Callaway at shortstop. Gonzalez in left. Shul in center. And Norman is in right. In the bottom of the first inning, only the Butler Blue Sox presented by the ready to go. System center fielder number 10, Tanner Murphy.
Ball's popped up by Murphy. That'll make it out of the stadium. He's down 0-2 here. He'll just be looking to choke up, maybe protect, just make contact. Doesn't want to swing too hard. Here's the delivery from Nyland's outside. Miners go with a black hat this year. Normally they're either green or yellow. Changing it up a bit. One, two, hard liner to second. Backhand stopped by Bergeron. Throw to first is in time to get him. Nice backhand deep in the hole. That brings in Haven Parks. Shortstop from Kent State. Take a pitch high. And here is the 1-0. Popped up. That's way up there. And it comes down off the net. Foul ball. That was close. It was up there about, <laughs> about a day and a half before <laughs> it came down. But it does come down it off the net, so it's a dead ball, even though shortstop out there. Callaway made the catch. Dead ball all the way after it hits the netting. No rebounds here. The one one. Ooh, check swing. He says he got one around. It's one and two. Parks this year, he has the third highest batting average on the team. That being 310, he leads the team in triples with two. One, two, way high. Brought Kristen out of the cr crouch, but he saved the umpire's mask, I think, there. Two, two, swing, and a miss, strike three. Parks goes down, swinging. Two down. Now batting number eight, right fielder, Kevin yeah, Scott. Yeah. really good for the Blue Sox. Their middle of the order, top to middle of the order, is really productive in producing this season. Well, Scott just got here about a week ago. He took the road trip to Lafayette and Danville and then a couple other places, West Virginia. So he had six games under his belt before he came in here. He's impressed. He had a home run a couple of nights ago. A bomb. Ferguson hit a bomb last night. And Scott ahead 3-0. Three, oh. three wide ones, not even close really from Nylon. And the 3-0. Oh. You'll watch that one for a called strike. Scott from Delaware. A native of Delaware as well. That pitch just in, in there for a called strike. It looked like uh, he's going to get ball four there, but uh, stay there. He's watched five now. Here's the three two. Scott checks swing. I called strike three. And that will end the inning. Two strikeouts for Nyland. We'll go to the second. It's West Virginia one and Butler nothing.
Ready to go here in the top of the second inning. The Blue Sox are down one nothing. Uh, Kyle Bergeron, the six hitter, will bat first. Made a nice play at second in the first inning. Uh, Rob Murphy of a base hit. Uh, he chops one off the plate. Stouts looked pretty good in the first inning. He he got a couple of ground outs. Uh, w uh, unfortunate error. He probably could have got a double play out of out of the one that uh, went off of Park's glove in center or in uh, shortstop that went out of the center field. Ooh, broke off a nice curveball there. Yeah, I probably would have gotten out of the inning, um, but unfortunately he he could not in the run scored. And the 0-2, the bouncer, nice block from Gulakowski. The catcher, and they played third last night. He's been around all over Diamond DH as well. He's a versatile player. He's got a good bat, too. Managers love players like that. And we got quite a few on this team. 2-2, mm -hmm. two -two, right. Oh boy, that was a little bit inside, I guess. Looked pretty good. So after an 0-2 count, now it's a full one. And a 3-2 ground ball through the hole out in the left base hit from Bergeron. 90s one of them ground Remember balls again, get to double play ball. Yeah. He's been Keeping it, they haven't hit him hard at all no. early on. It's all been little ground balls. Uh -huh. uh, I guess the one that Parks was hit pretty hard, but it was hit right at him. And really, I'm sure he'll tell you, he should have made the play. Hit right off his glove as he went down to fit, field it. Didn't take a bad hop or anything. It just ate him up. Pitch inside. Vulikowski thought about a snap throw, forcing Bergeron back to the bag. Pressure on speeds, look something to look forward to because he leads his team with seven stolen bases. That's probably why they're keeping a close look at him. On him. He got a good lead that last time. Yeah. Pitch outside. Now it's a 2-0 count. This is a good hit and run count. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if they put it on here. With the amount of contact they're making, albeit not hard contact. There it is, ground ball. Ferguson bobbles it, throws to second. They get the out there. And that was a close play. Good job by Parks to hold the bag on a throw that kind of come in low. And they get a, a, a much needed out. I thought at first Ferguson was going to hold on to that ball and, and head back to the bag to take the sure out, but they get the lead runner. That's a good play on his part. Yeah, it was smart to know that he still could get that runner so he could have just a runner on first instead of another runner in scoring position. So Ramsey at first. Here's Christen. And he'll take a fastball near the letters. Kristen from Lipscomb. Pitch outside. Gulikowski with a snap the first. They almost got him. Good, good idea, but good awareness by Ramsey to get back. One thing interesting about Kristen here is he only wears one batting glove. He's got the Michael Jackson white glove on out there. I really do not understand that That's at all. That's a strange, I've never seen it. Well, I, I've never noticed that. I've probably, probably seen it before, but just hadn't noticed it. But definitely. It's like he's a golfer. Yeah, 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 you're right. With the left hand, yeah. But, yeah, he's got the bottom hand, though. <laughs> the golfer, you always put the top hand on. With, with the, I think. No, it's bottom no, hand, you're right. No, it would be the left hand. Yeah, I'm a righty, so I, yeah, I'm a left hand. Yeah. Well, it's uh, three and one here, and I'm, I'm lefty, so it'd be my right. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Well, I know. <laughs> three one delivery is swung on a miss for strike two. Throw down to first, or second, and then safely is Ramsey. Stolen base. Gulkowski not really throwing that one to his maximum potential, I guess you could say. Not that hard of a ball thrown down to second. A good jump from Ramsey. Uh, helped aid that stolen base. Now he's getting a decent lead out at second. 
Maglione is that ball fouled out of play. Maglione coming in close to the bag to try to keep him a little bit closer, but we'll see how that plays out. With one out, anything to the outfield, you want your runner on second base to score if a ball gets hit single to the outfield. A check, and here's the pitch. It's fouled off. Kristen just stays alive. <laughs> Our ball girl, Sarah, getting uh, getting a shout out as she heads out. She's always on. She's the best one in the league by far. She's always on it. Um, if that, when that umpire needs baseball, she's there. Ball four here. Kristen will head down to first. Two men on and one out. Now batting for the minors. Now the bottom of the order in Callaway. Cody Callaway. It's called a strike to Callaway. It goes to Gannon, which is just up 79 at Erie. Now ground ball just passed out. This could be a double play ball. Stepping on the bag is Park Serta first. He got him. A 6-3 double play. And, and that's how we'll end the second inning. No runs come across on one hit, no errors, and one man left stranded. We'll go to the bottom half of the second with West Virginia leading one nothing. James Meeker leads off the bottom of the second. one nothing West Virginia. An unearned run coming across in the first inning. Hard hit grounder, Bergeron fields, and heads towards the first is in time to beat Meeker. One away, nice, another nice job by Bergeron out of second. Yeah, a couple four threes and two Ks for Nyla, and he's having a good game so far. Yeah, he's, he's looked solid, and now here's Gulikowski, left-handed hitting catcher. A little chop at the second. Infield practice for Berger on here, and he's got it for the second out. Uh, Nyland working out Berger on here. 
making all the plays. The first baseman, Patrick Ferguson. Now here's Pat Ferguson. Eight home runs on the summer, three away from tying the Blue Sox single season record. David Marcus, first pitch is low. That's crazy, we're so early in the season and he's already, he's only three home runs away from from that. Here's the 1-0, it's called strike. Got a good babe over there. The Ox trying to get the fans into it. 1-1. One, one. Ooh, big cut. Nothing of it. Watch outside. Yeah, Ferguson with eight home runs is tied for first in the league with Brady Cherry of Terre Haute, ball popped out of the stadium. It's amazing how the ball's flying this year. The, the, the last couple summers we've had a ball with more raised seam. This one is a flatter seam. And I, and I think that is one of the major differences as to why the ball was able to, ooh, just outside, um, fly a little bit more this year, but that's not taking anything away from Pat. He he has obliterated several baseballs this summer. And he'll strike out here on a curveball to end the second. On to the third. It's West Virginia one and Butler nothing. First pitch swinging and a little flare out over an outstretched parks for a leadoff single for Shoal to lead off the third here. With the Miners leading one nothing. So ball hit it in the no man's land. Not hit hard, but hit well enough to fall in between Gunn and Parks. It's been a couple of those hits for the Miners. And that's nothing you can do if. You're the Blue Sox. It's not like those specific plays there have been errors. It's just that's what you want to do as a hitter, get the ball where no players can possibly have a chance to field it cleanly. It's only the second ball that's made to the out. Oh, it's the third ball. I guess the one hit off Parks went in the outfield too, but on its own, that's only the, third, the second ball all game that's made it past the infield. So here is Mitchell. He singled and scored the lone run of the game so far in the third, or in the first inning, I should say. We're in the third right now. Throw over to first by Stout, and back safely is Schul. Yeah, going through this list from the first weekend, Schul was not here, Mitchell was not here, 
Ward was not here. Uh, Ramsey was not here. Kristen was not here. So they've got s five guys in their lineup tonight that weren't. And now the ball's thrown away. And instead of a stolen base, it'll be a stolen base and an error. And, and, oh, boy. That's the second time that the Boo Sox have been throwing the ball around. Yeah, that's the second error on the game. Yeah. I, who do you give that one to, Hugh? I don't know. <laughs> Probably have to give it to the guy who threw it. Yeah, I would assume so. Unfortunately, usually nine nine times out of ten, the error is on the guy who threw the ball. Mm -hmm. And so we got a 2-1 count. With now all of a sudden a runner on third. And nobody out. So here's the pitch. Chopper to second. This will do it. As Maglion will go throw to first to get the out. Runner comes home to score. The Miners lead 2-0. And they've got two runs tonight on, on, on uh, Blue Sox errors. And that's uh, that. That was a trend in the early part of the season. Seem to remedy that the last couple of nights. They we we um, played a couple of pretty clean games in the field. And uh, tonight it's kind of gone the other way a bit. There was one down. Here's Norman. He reached on an error his first time up. One O's popped up way up and gun fighting the sun is under it and has it for the yeah, that's not an easy play out there with the sun beating in right into his eyes and uh, he did a good job of shielding himself and picking up the ball no, to make the catch because guarantee you he didn't see it off the bat oh no definitely you could definitely tell that because he, he did not take a straight line back to get the ball he was a little left and right all over the place just because he did not see it right off the bat well he makes a nice play out there when Two down, here's Dan Ward. Stout's first pitch is inside. Ward uh, recorded an RBI on a ground out in the first inning. Went to Tennessee Wesleyan this year where he hit 21 homers uh, in a college season is pretty impressive. Yeah, depending on how good the team is, if they make it to the playoffs, you're looking at like between 40 to 50 games. Hard hit ball, but foul. Yeah, I, I think they played like 44 games. He had 21 homers. Yeah, so it's about one every two games. Yeah. He's had quite a pass. He played at Ohio for a year, quit baseball, went and drove a, a bus, a city bus up in Cleveland, uh, then uh, got into some legal trouble. Then ended up going down to Eastern New Mexico, playing for a couple of years. Now finished this year at Tennessee Wesleyan, so he's been he's been all over the place, and um, he, he's definitely a, a, a super talented player. Um, Twenty six, he's one of the older guys in the league, and I think he'll be moving on to pro ball once the season's over. Pitch is away for ball four, and the two out walk puts Ward on first. Maybe he'll be like the, like Cody, the manager, and play for the Wild Things, move up yeah. into a different league. I could see him going to the Frontier League or the American Association or even um, even getting signed by, you know. And then I, I, I'm going to guess he's going to have to go independent ball first because he wasn't drafted this year. And if you're not drafted, you're, ooh, that ball to the backstop. And Ward will head to second on a wild pitch. Nice crowd on hand tonight. Fireworks following the matchup. And they've come out for it. I'd say we're close to maybe over a thousand here tonight. Yeah, I'd say so. Miners were here for our first fireworks night too, and they obliged by losing. Ground ball, Maglione's got it at second. He'll throw to first to end the inning. That's good range from Maglione. Had to shift over to his right, but took care of it. And the Miners add a run on one hit, one error, and leave one on base. On to the bottom half of the third, it is West Virginia two and Butler nothing.
It's time for each and every one of us to face a very troubling fact. There exists. Third out on the yeah, little Yeah, it would have been the third here. out. I guess, well, he's still in the box, so it must have, I apologize. It must have hit his foot and then went out to second base. The, fa the, the team went off the field. Had some, some of them started off the field, and then I looked down, was going through my line score, look up, he's back in the box again. So in, order, in order for that to get that second base off his foot, he must hit that ball real hard. And now he hits it out into right field and fairly well. Scott going back to the wall, and it is gone. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? A home run. Oh, my goodness. It's now a 4-0 uh, game. Yeah, that's not really, that's, that's not good. <laughs> Very weird circumstances right there. I wish we knew exactly what the call in the field was. That's, that's the only thing it could have been. It, it hit his foot on his way out to second base. It, there's not, nothing else that I could come up with. It was a hard grounder to second, and he threw him out, and he even ran it out. Ah. Well, nobody made a fuss out of the, in the Blue Sox dugout, so it must have hit his foot or some part of his body, because as soon as it hits a part of your body, it's dead it, 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 when you're in the box still. So that's, oh, my. At first, I thought I, 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 I missed an out or had too many outs. Yeah. No, that wasn't the case. Uh, South throws. One is fouled off. One and two, the count on Bergeron. Ball popped up. Here it comes. No, nah, it's going to make it on top of the stand. Wait for it. There it is. Now all the kids are going to try to leave the park and go find the ball. Pitch inside, two and two. Even though they're not allowed, they still will. <laughs> the interns need to do a better job of not letting them, not letting them do that. <laughs> it's hard to track kids. <laughs> Now it's three and two. Stout trying to get the last out of the inning here. And here's the pitch. It is popped up into shallow right. Coming in is Scott. He's got it. And I can tell you that that's the last out of the inning. Three runs come across for the Miners on two hits, one error, and there is no one left on base. On to the bottom of the third, Miners four, Butler nothing. It's time for each and every one of us to face a very troubling fact. There exists a significant heroin and opioid epidemic in not only Butler County, but elsewhere across the country. I'm Rich Goldinger, the District Attorney of Butler County. This is my backyard and yours too. Together, we can work to eradicate the high-level drug dealers that supply these drugs to those using them. Heroin and opioid abuse does not discriminate. Users come from all economic backgrounds, are male and female, and may be teenagers or middle-aged adults. With your help and in conjunction with the Butler County Drug Task Force and the Pennsylvania Office of Attorney General, we can target those dealers who bring this poison into our county. Please report any suspicious activity to your local law enforcement agency, the Pennsylvania State Police, or to my office. This is our ballpark. This is our county. This is our backyard. Let's all say, not in my backyard. Please enjoy tonight's Blue Sox game. Bottom of the third, West Virginia four, Butler nothing. And roller up the first base line, taking it to the bag himself is Mitchell. Webb is retired, and that's seven in a row for, to start the game for Nyland. 
Uh, we were talking off air, uh, talking to Pat. He come out. He was just as confused as I was about that. We had to go back and watch the replay on the video and not listen to the audio because it was it, <laughs> it doesn't match the video. <laughs> That's my bad. But we we can't tell if. Well, Here's a ground ball to second. I'm going to let me finish this. 4-3 is the put out of Maglione. Their uh, first pitch swing, and they're coming up empty. Really, really giving Berger off practice. Yeah. That might, that's four. That's yeah. the fourth. Four, two, three strikeouts, and uh, three unassisted. Eight in a row retired, and Nyland, I, he might have, I, I don't have the, the, Gun takes one. Whenever you make two uh, pit, two outs on two pitches, you're going to take. But now he's down 0 and 2. So now it's a four four pitches, an 0 2 count, and two outs for Nyland. Here's the pitch. It's a little bit outside. Real close pitch there. I'm surprised Gun took that. Well, here's the next one. Gun will chop to short. Ooh, ranging over is Callaway. Throw to first in time. Miner's putting on an infield clinic out here tonight. And nine in a row set down by Nyland to start the game. We'll go to the fourth, West Virginia four, Butler nothing. Chad Ramsey leads it off for the Miners here in the top of the fourth. It's 4 nothing. West Virginia on top. Butler, only part of the scoreboard that's lit up for them is two errors to this point. A long way to go. Stout is in a 1-1 count here with Ramsey, who reached on a fielder's choice and stole the base in the second. I'm Jaron Steele, joined by Hugh O'Neill tonight. Hugh. Uh, so far, this has been a night where uh, nothing really has gone that well for the Blue Sox <laughs> in any facet of the game. Hitting, I, I, you know what, Stout, I got to give him credit. He's, he's a, he gave up the two-run bomb, but but he has uh, not been helped out by his defense. Uh, those two costly errors get, turned into two runs. And a swing and a miss here. But he does get a strike out of Ramsey here. That's the... First strikeout of the evening. Yeah, that strikeout helps, and going into the bottom three part of the order, Jake Stout looks to really get out of this inning, maybe one, two, three, this being the bottom of the order. Pitches blown away to Crisson, walked in the second inning from... Lipscomb University takes a pitch. He's ahead 2 0. Oh. 2 0, oh, grounder to short. Parks fields it, throws the first, and gets him. 
That's a pretty nice play in the middle of the infield there. A nice little twirl but in the throw right on line. Yeah, that was nice. It really it looked like the ball might be coming out of his glove. It looked like it started to peek out. But uh, that, was, that was a really good job to keep that ball in his glove and then make the, the great throw. Yeah, a little snow cone action there. So two away, here's Callaway. He grounded out to short his first time up. Half the miners come up, they have their jersey flying wide open. <laughs> it's, it's a hot, hot yeah. yeah, it is a hot night. Ground ball to short. Parks bobbles it, recovers, throws to first, and gets him. So just like you said at the top of the inning, you, you wanted to get the bottom of the order, one, two, three, and that's exactly yeah, what Stout does here. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth with the miners ahead four nothing. And this inning break is brought to Top of the order due up for Butler in the bottom of the fourth inning. Murphy Park Scott trying to solve Brandon Island who gets a first pitch curve ball across. Slider, one or the other. Breaking pitch. Yeah, Butler looking still looking for its first hit. Really haven't made any contact against them of, of any the actually the hardest hit ball was by Murphy, but he was robbed of a hit by by uh, Bergeron. Bouncer in two and one. Nyland showing good good control. Hasn't even allowed a walk or anything. No Blue Sox has reached ba base at all. Two one. It's right there for a called strike. Now ball fouled off, almost took a minor with it in the dugout, but thankfully he was able to dodge it. Oh, Murphy strikes out on a fastball low and away. And Nyland continues to deal. Yeah, that's his fourth strikeout. So along with four strikeouts, four ground balls to second base, and then a ground ball to shortstop and first. So no, no pop-ups. Nothing has been hit in the air so far for the Blue Sox. Nyland's first pitch to Parks is a ground ball to second. Bergeron on to first. Tell me if you heard that before tonight. <laughs> Two away. We need to just get like a recording of you saying ground ball to Bergeron throws to first. Like, that's what we need. Yeah. It's five. Yeah. And um, now here's Calvin Scott, who was called out on strikes. He looked at five pitches. It looked like the fifth one was wide, but he was rung up. Now he'll go swinging on the first one, foul it off. Actually, he looked at seven. It looked like the, the seventh one would have been wide, but yeah. no, six. 
It was three S and two. Six. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Math. All right. So <laughs> Scott is in a one-one count here. Here's the pitch. Yeah, he's going to chop it to third, and the throw crossed is in plenty of time by Ramsey. And how about that? That is 12 in a row to start the game that Nyland has set down. On to the fifth inning with the Miners ahead for nothing. Every one of us to face a very Everyone's favorite part of the week is Thursday because that means it's Thirsty Thursday. Come out to Kelly Automotive Park each Thursday to support your favorite hometown team, the Butler Blue Sox, and enjoy our special concession prices, including $1 draft beers and 50 cent pops. Tickets start at just $7 and can be purchased online at butlerbluesocks.net and or by phone at 724-256-9994. Let's go Blue Sox. First pitch to Ryan Schul is a called strike from Jake Stout as we play the top of the fifth with there's a swinging strike. West Virginia leading 4-0, four, four hits for the Miners, no errors. Blue Sox with goose eggs except for a pair of errors that actually were extremely costly in this game. It directly resulted in two runs. A one two count here after pitch outside. Schul is one for two, singled and scored on in the third. Ball popped out of the stadium here. And he also has a three unassisted to Ferguson in the first. Yeah, this being Schul's third at bat. Some of the guys for Butler have only had one so far. Yeah. With being no hits. Six of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Foul ball uh, straight back by Shul here. He's staying alive. Two, two. Swing and a miss. And Gulikowski. Wait, what happened? I think the ump's going to call it foul. That's the only reasonable thing. Gulikowski went to throw it over to first, and the umpire just stopped that because it did hit the it did hit the turf. Well, now they're going to they're going to converge here. Our bases umpire. Mr. Smith and Murphy, they're gonna call that a foul ball. That didn't even, that, there's no way. Yeah, I'm not too sure on that. If that was a foul ball, then, well, it didn't even make any noise. No. And if that was a foul ball, it must have just grazed one grain, the ball, one grain of the bat. Oh my. Two two and that's oh jeez, that's exactly what happens too. Now it gets by Gun out in the left field. That's going to be a, a triple. Gun's throw pretty good, but he's in with a triple. 
That's twice that a a weird play has happened that we don't know the direct answer to, and it has hurt the Blue Sox. He did not foul that ball off. I'm sorry. He didn't touch it. And now he gets rewarded with a triple. Poor Stout. Poor Jake Stout. Yeah, he is. He is. That's bad luck this evening. <laughs> He's overall pitched a pretty good game. Just that one mistake pitch to Bergeron. Or, yeah. Mitchell, the big cut, misses. Or Gonzalez, not Bergeron. I'm so used to saying Bergeron's name with all those ground balls to second base. It's just in my head now. <laughs> 0 1 right there for a called strike. Good pitch from Stout. Miner's already head 4 0, looking to add another. And line drive to the gap. That's going to get down, and that's going to be extra bases. All the way to the wall it goes off the Howard Agency sign. And. Looks like we're going to have back-to-back -back triples here. An RBI triple for Mitchell, and it is now West Virginia 5, Butler nothing. Very rare that you see back-to-back -back triples. Right triples Austin. don't come around that often. But, yeah, that was a good, good hit by Mitchell. And, honestly, it didn't even seem like he was – he wasn't sprinting. Like He wasn't running that hard around in the base. He kind of just – he knew he was going to be able to get three without really I can throw a throw really contending with him. Well, Josh Forbes out to talk with Stout. Give him a breather here. Could be two things. I, I don't think he's really concerned of the way Stout is pitching. Um, just trying to break up the momentum from West Virginia. I know I did that today. I had a game with my pony team, and multiple times I had to go out there because of defensive errors and mistakes. Just trying to break the momentum that West Virginia has built up, especially in this inning. Umpires joined them. He's trying to get this game moved along so we can go home. <laughs> I, I swear that ball did not get fouled off. I'm thinking about it in my head and during this, not while you were talking there. I'm replaying that in my mind. But they didn't really argue it, so maybe he did. I don't, but I just, it looked like it was a footer and he's his bat. Pitch inside to Norman, who is 0 for 1. But he did reach on it. Actually, 0 for 2. Reached on an error. The pitch is a called strike. 1 and 1 on the outer half. Oh. Strike it. Waiting to see if you call that one a foul ball. I know, too. I was waiting to. <laughs> Not that it would have mattered in no, that situation, but strikes. still. He got him on a back foot curveball that time. Yeah, and the one, two. He got him again. Lukowski tagged him out. Strikeout for Stout. That's his second of the game. Now batting. Number six, the And Norman. Just broke his bat in half. Probably cost him some money. He got his money's worth, though. He broke it in about 10 pieces. Got a lot of splinters off that thing. Pitch outside to Dan Ward. Runner on third and one out. Already one across this inning. West Virginia leading five to nothing. Uh, chopper to third. Runner will stay put. And Meeker will throw across to get him out. Ward is retired, 5-3, two down. Good job by Meeker to look the runner Mitchell back now to the bag there and dissolve any thoughts of trying to sneak home on that. Yeah, you read my mind. That's what I was, that's what I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> I 
it's very crucial because if you don't look that runner, he's definitely going to score. Yeah, he's going to sneak right in behind you and then take off after you have you throw it across. So he does a good job there. Here's uh, Gonzalez. He homered his last time up. He cuts and misses at a curveball. Pretty good curveball. Got some life to it. He's used it well this inning. You got Norman to strike out on it. Now he comes back with a fastball. A chopper off the plate. Stout has to wait for a while for it to come down, but he gets it to Ferguson in plenty of time to finish the inning. Two runs come across, or one run comes across on two hits, I think. And no errors. One man left on base. To the bottom half of the fifth we go with the Miners leading five to nothing. James Meeker takes a ball to begin the bottom of the fifth inning with the Blue Sox trailing 5 0. And he's had 2 0. Nylon has retired 12 straight to begin the game. 2 0 delivery on its way outside. Yeah, we keep mentioning this, mentioning this, and some say that. You know, when you mention if someone's having a perfect game, you really jinx him. So hopefully that will work. Well, there know? it is. Yeah. He just jinxed it. <laughs> Ball four. First base run of the game for the Blue Sox is Meeker. Four wide ones from Nyland. Okay, so he is not allowed to hit either. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Coco and Champion City tied at three in the top of the fourth. Danville two, Quincy nothing in the bottom of the second. Chillicothe four, Terre Haute three in the top of the fourth, and Lafayette three, Springfield nothing in the top of the fourth. Yeah, first pitch to Gulikowski is a called strike. Well, you know, one is high. Gulikowski, one of the many that have grounded out the second in this game. The Blue Sox. Throw over to first. They almost caught Meeker. Leaning the wrong way, but he gets his hand in ahead of the tag from Mitchell. Oh, line drive. Base hit. That'll do it. First hit of the ball game. Meeker around second, but he'll hold up there. And two men, two men on and nobody out. So now all that stuff's gone. No, no hitter's gone. Perfect game's gone. Now let's get some runs. Yeah. That's a good guy to do it right here. He can put a three spot on the board real quick. Oh, yeah. Let's look for maybe nine. Nine home runs. Yeah. A little bit of life here. Uh, after a really a, a fruitless four innings for Butler, maybe a little bit of, um, a little bit going here. Try to get a couple runs back. Stay in the game. Yeah, Ferguson is probably the one guy, like the most, the guy you really want in this situation to really change the momentum and this, how the game's going. First pitch fastball, this is outside. A little bit cooking here after, after a 
No hitter, perfect game through four. Here's the pitch, Ferguson, oh, he wanted that one, but he fouls it out of the stadium, just got on top of it. Christian Webb on deck. And here's the pitch, it is line drive, base hit out in the right field. Hold, runners hold. And oh my goodness, they almost got the guy at second base. He called him safe though, thankfully. No, Ooh, that was a close call for Kulikowski out there, but the bases are loaded. Yeah, Gulikowski, <laughs> the throw comes in. Gulikowski, I don't know if he was thinking that the right fielder was going to throw home, so he comes off the base a couple steps and. That, that play was really close. I think that call could have gone either way. Time called by Joe Goddard. The acting manager this evening was Tim Epling. Uh, not able to make the trip up this weekend. And so Joe Goddard, a longtime baseball man, is coaching the team along with uh, Mr. Larkin. They're in good hands. And after you know, rolling through four innings, you can understand why he went out to talk to him. Yeah. Three straight base runners. First pitch is right there for a called strike to Webb. Nyland's pitch is low and inside. We've seen the Blue Sox make some major comebacks before. They were down 7 nothing after the first inning out in Lafayette, only to come back to take the lead before Lafayette come back to get the win. And ball is in, sinking out in the shallow center. Catch is made, throw home. He is not in time as Meeker will come in to score. That ball was headed into the dugout. And the... Usai's going to run. I thought for a second he appealed down to third as if he, as if he didn't. Uh, he might have left early, but they say no. And so Webb's sacrifice fly to center field makes it 5-1. to one. Kind of surprised that Gulikowski didn't uh, advance to third. I understand that it was, very, that it was a very shallow ball. Um, but with that throw, once he saw the throw and going home and the ball getting past the catcher, you'd think that he would be at third base right now. Well, here's Maglione, and he, he has a ball hit pretty well out into right field. That is a fair ball, and no, no, he called it a foul ball. Oh, my, just, just foul, apparently. It took a while for him it to did. call that foul. Because I, it absolutely did. It must have been extremely close, but it does not go Butler's way. Smaglione, he was halfway to, he second. was almost at second. Yeah, he was halfway, he rounded first before he called that a foul ball. Oh, that was, that was trouble, trouble for the Miners if that was a fair ball. Yeah, you, that's at least scoring two if that's, a, if that's fair and it honestly may, might be a trouble. Well, it's just a strike now. Very long strike. Uh, pause by Nyland, who's been hit around this inning. Maglione showed Bunt, pulled it back. Ball blocked nicely by Christen. Uh, that, that ball gets away from it all. Both runners are going to be in scoring position. They say football is a game of inches. Yeah. That was a game of inches right there. Mm -hmm. Runners on second and third instead of first and second. Really different. Ball hit well out in the right center. And that will get down and go to the wall. That one is fair. Coming around to score is Gulikowski. And another one's going to come in as Ferguson's right behind him. Maglione is in with a triple. And it is now 5-3. to three. 
Well, I just said he would have gotten a triple on that foul ball, and he rose that ball to right center field. Really a, a, bat, a great hit. He's able to wheel and deal, gets a third base with the throw. He beats the throw even if the throw was there. Putting the Blue Sox, raising that score, putting them on the board. All right. Now Nyland has only recorded one out, and that was a sacrifice fly after going the first four innings without giving up a base runner. So they, they, the third, well, some of these guys, second time around, the four through eight hitters have had their way here. And now the miners might be, yep, there is a guy going up to the hill in the bullpen. A couple guys loosening up, but nobody's throwing yet. Uh, pitch is inside to Joe Gunn. Ground out 6-3 his first time up. Now a line drive to center field. That'll hang up. Maglione will tag on the catch out there. Throws cut off, and it's now 5-4. Sacrifice fly to center by Gunn. Cuts it to a one-run game. And the Buller Blue Sox are only down by one run. <laughs> now batting second number 10, Tanner Good Murphy. stuff this inning but in the batter's box from Butler. Even the outs are productive here. And here is Murphy. He's hit. He'll head to first. Yeah, it took one time to get through the order and these the bottom from four down they they're reading the island and they have done a good job of getting on base action in the bullpen now the catcher's going to set up and it looks like a left-hander is going to get loose with Meeker, Gulikowski, Ferguson, back to back to back. I can see why they would be getting a lefty loose. Yeah, he gets through. Well, actually, Park's a lefty, but he's in the, at the box now. He takes a strike. Throw over to first, and Murphy dives back safely. But uh, Scott right-handed. But after that, the three straight, like four straight lefties with Webb in there too. So. Um, I imagine that he will probably be coming in next inning. Runner goes, and Murphy is safe. Ball gets away, and he'll head to third. The throw by Schoen, not in time. A stolen base, and an E2 has the tying run at third. And just like that, everything changes. If you just make contact now, get, get on base with a hit, that run's going to score, and it'll be a tie ball game. Well, this is a hard cry from where we were. A far cry from where we were uh, about 20 minutes ago. Yeah. We're right in this thing all of a sudden. 5-4 score, Murphy at third, and Parks at the plate. A base hit will tie it. And it's a chopper to first. And that will end the inning. Mitchell steps on the bag. But it's a good inning nonetheless as the Blue Sox score four runs on three hits. It's one error and leave one on base. On to the sixth, it's West Virginia five and Butler four.
Well, after a successful fifth inning, the Blue Sox are right back in at 5-4. Stout out to work the six here. Bergeron, R Ramsey, and Crisson do up for the minors here. Bunt attempt shown by Bergeron, but he gets it back in time for the ball. For a ball. Um, Bergeron has been uh, busy in the field, and at the plate he is one for two, singled in the second inning. Little chopper off his foot. Bergeron from the University of the Incarnate Word. I have never heard of that before I did uh, prep for him. <laughs> I've never heard of it until just now. <laughs> but attempt, and he's not able to make contact. It's two and two. I wonder where that is. It, 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 he's from Texas. So. Get on the old Google. And figure it out. If it loads. Pitch inside. Full count to the leadoff man in the sixth, Bergeron. And now he gets hit. Yeah, a 3 2 count, that's not great to be hit. You know, if it's an 0 2 count as a batter and you get hit, it's. It's pretty good because yeah. you get on base uh, as opposed to striking out or getting out. 3-2 count, that's not really what you're looking for. You're looking for a ball. Well, that'll be it for Stout. And it looks like Wyatt Dockers going to come in to replace him. Stout goes 5-plus. And at the moment, he's allowed five runs, uh, three earned on... And shop a wide selection of team Six hits. and merchandise from the Pittsburgh Steelers, Pittsburgh Pirates, and of course the Stanley Cup champions, Pittsburgh Penguins. Two walks and the pair of strikeouts. Team sports gear. Our yeah, Wyatt Doggerty coming and making his first appearance. He attends Slippery Rock University. Uh, last year, he had a record of 2-2 two and two through 17 times. Uh, he started one game, had four saves. He pitched 32.1 uh, innings. His, his, uh, his batting average against was .276, so 276. Um, that's pretty good for college, Slippery Rock being D2. Um, so, yeah, he's uh, he's pretty excited to be here. I've talked to him for a little bit. Um, like I said earlier in the broadcast, pretty good friend. So I'm excited that he's here. Yeah, he, um, I want to say he was their closer this spring at, yes. uh, at Slippery Rock. Uh, only a sophomore. Uh, but... A lot of room to grow yet, and he's already uh, shown that he can be a pretty successful pitcher. Yeah, coming out of high school, a lot of teams, a lot of schools were looking at him because he does throw pretty hard. I think coming out of high school, he was uh, gone between 88 and 90, so uh, that's pretty solid. And as he gets older, they, they, they'll work with them in college, and his VLO will go up even more probably. Yeah, who knows what it is now? I think uh, I think he was gone at 92. Thank you. So yeah, it's, um, that'll play in this league for sure. That'll play anywhere. Yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, University of the Incarnate Word is in San Antonio. Oh, okay. Mm. Thanks, Google. Pitch inside to Ramsey. He is over on the night. Reached on a fielder's choice and struck out swinging. Runner at first with a bit of a lead. Bergeron. Doherty comes home and misses inside. Two O count. Pitch again inside and low. I did, in his warm-up pitch, he didn't throw a single strike. I was hoping he got them all out of the way, but he's, <laughs> he's behind 3-0 and here. Yeah, here's the pitch. 
strike, a little late strike call. <laughs> yeah, that was the same spot yeah. as the pitch before. It was, it was low. <laughs> but uh, maybe a courtesy strike from Mr. Murphy behind home plate. 3-1. Called strike. That was, that was a better pitch right at the knees. And uh, on the inner half. He's battled back here. And the 3 2 upcoming from Dockerty. It's low for ball four. Yeah, who really knows when the la I didn't ask him when the last time Wyatt has pitched because I'm not 100% sure when Slippery Rock no, finished. They didn't make it to the uh, PSAC tournament, or make it out to the regional. They made it to the PSAC. I think they went two and out. So, so he's pretty April, cold. Yeah, April, I would say. He's probably throwing some pens. Yeah, but, but live games. You can't, yeah. Yeah. Big difference between pens and live games. Uh, he, uh, so it's been like middle of May is whenever the PSAC tournament So about a month. Is. Yeah. Pitch inside to Christen. 0 for 1. Did draw a walk. Now tries a bunt attempt. Pulls it back. And takes a ball. Dockery takes a deep breath on the hill. Wearing number 2, which is the number Tyler Benson had until he vacated for the professional baseball after being drafted mm -hmm. on Wednesday. You good for him. Who did he get drafted by? Um, that's a good question. I can't remember it off the top of my head. There were seven of them drafted, so they're called strike. Uh, Christian trying to give himself up here, and sometimes whenever you're a pitcher, that can be tough to locate. Pitch fouled off. Oh, God, that got the umpire. Seems to be all right, though. San Diego is where Benson was drafted by. San Diego in the 31st round. Kyle Zurich, Adam Blade, Cameron Blago, former players also that uh, had their name called. And then also Aaron Phillips, Cole Peterson, and Patrick Dayton, who weren't here yet. Runners go. The ball's fouled off. Spoils a great uh, jump by Callaway. He had been in there standing up. Yeah, Dayton, Peterson, Phillips were on the roster at the time they were drafted, but uh, they were all waiting for the draft results before they came in. And unfortunately, they're not going to make it here now yeah. because they're all uh, headed to their respective uh, short season leagues, whatever the affiliate is for the teams they were drafted. Pitch high, and that's ball four, and the bases are loaded with nobody out. No, yeah, Doherty having a little bit of control issues to start the game, hopefully. Uh, start the game for him in this inning. Hopefully he will be able to settle down. Um, Paven, uh, yep. uh, yeah. I was just going to say as uh, Paven Parks comes out to really just calm him down and uh, we're going to have a mound visit. Yeah, Forbes is going to come out and talk to him real quick. Ask him what's going on. But a couple of players dropped it in the earlier rounds. The, that's the eighth and the ninth round. Yeah, uh, Zurich was taken in the eighth round. Uh, by the Yankees. He was our closer last summer. Very good fastball, 95, 96 mile an hour. Got good breaking stuff too. And uh, Phillips was taken in the ninth round by San Francisco. Uh, the amount of rounds that the baseball draft is, that's pretty cool to get drafted in that early. There was a kid from Connellsville that got drafted. He didn't even play baseball this year. Really? Yeah, 35th round by the Seattle Mariners. Now, uh, anyway, we got Bergeron on third, Ramsey on second, Kristen on first, and at the plate is Callaway. Three men on, nobody out, and the um, Blue Sox, after getting four runs in the last inning, are in danger of giving some of those right back. Here's the 0-1. Foul ball straight back. So he's got him where he wants him here. A punch out would be uh, would be very good here. <laughs> yeah, even a sacrifice outs for, for a run. You know, he has grounded out to shortstop twice. The, yeah, the only way I would accept that is if they get a double play out. Yeah. Of it. And then pitch high. Good 
pitcher's pitch there, trying to get him to go up the ladder, but no, no dice. At, at this stage of the game, you want to limit the damage as much as possible, especially after getting right back into it. You don't want to give this thing away. Doherty's 1-2 is fouled off. Job by Callaway to get a piece of that on the way by. What was a real fast-paced game uh, the past whole inning has been decently longer than the rest of the, rest of the game. Yeah, it's it's definitely uh, brought the average back down. Pitch yeah. high, two and two. To the, uh, well, for Nyland, those first four innings, I think he was out there for a total of ten minutes. <laughs> he just cruised right through them. It's just short of 8.30, so we're an hour and a half into this thing now. Swing and a miss, strike three. Callaway goes down on a high fastball. One away, and now we can get that ground ball that we were talking about. Yeah. Now batting number 25, the center fielder, Ryan Scholl. Ryan Scholl has been a tough out tonight. He's two for three, had a triple, and a single. In fact, he even, was, he even struck out, and they gave him another, another chance. <laughs> and he, he had a triple. <laughs> I, I I talked to Pat, uh, our scorekeeper in between innings. He he couldn't figure it out either. He he couldn't. It was he said it definitely wasn't a foul ball. He thought it maybe was a balk, but they usually call that right away. Like yeah, like you were saying, and maybe he's just slow on a draw out there. I don't know. Pitch high to uh, Shoal. One out is high as well. So he started out missing low, and now he's missing a little bit high. Just got to find the middle. <laughs> nice to look up at the scoreboard and not see zeros for the home team. Pitch upstairs now. It's one pitch away from uh, walking in a run here. Looks like a lefty warming in the Blue Sox bullpen. Here's a 3-0. That's a strike. Good fastball. I think, uh, might be wrong, but I think Goddard just said, gave him a take sign again out there. He, did, he just nodded to him like, he had, unless he was saying swing away, he was. And uh, he came up empty. That was a big cut. It was. Absolutely. That was a huge hack, but didn't really get any reward for it. Now the pitch is fouled off into the net. It's coming right back at the umpire, but takes a detour. Strikeout would really help in this situation, and then um, you could have an out really any other way. Not have to worry about a run score. Three, two. Oh boy, that ball is smoked the right field, but it looks like the ballpark is going to hold it. Calvin Scott makes the catch. That's good news because, oh, now they got the runner at second base. Van Diego scores a run at home. And that made, wow, it's a 6 4 game. Trying to tag from first was Chris, and he's thrown out by the, R, uh, the cannon the of Calvin Scott in right field. Then the inning. So Bergeron comes in to score. Sacrifice fly and an RBI for sure. It was close to being a grand slam. But that's that's not bad for bases loaded with nobody out to only give up one run. We'll go to the bottom of the six with the Blue Sox down six to four.
Calvin Scott. Ready to go here, Calvin Scott gets the lead off after making a great play at the wall to get, a, get an out and then fired a second to get the, another out. Uh, to end the last inning, and now he smokes one up the middle. That's going to be off of a, an outstretched Bergeron. He's able to keep it in the infield, but that's that's it. That's a leadoff single for Scott. Bergeron has made a lot of plays tonight. That one's just a little bit too hot to handle. Yeah, Scott getting in on the action after being the only Butler player to not bat last inning. And it looks like Goddard's going to come out and make a pitching change. He's going to go to his lefty with all the lefties up in the order here. That lefty-lefty matchup is something that the pitchers fav are in favor of. Have, you have a little bit of an advantage. Well, Nyland will go five plus just like his counterpart. And he allows four runs, but he's responsible for the runner on base right now. Can't close the book on him. He gave up four hits. He walked one. And had four strikeouts. Pretty good outing outside of the fifth inning. Yeah. And replacing him. The left-hander, that's how that much we know. How many lefties they got? I think it's Austin Sheer Sheary. Yep, I think you're right. Austin Sheary, yeah. From Oakland University. Hard to tell. The numbers are hard to read. and he's Yeah, 13, Sheary. So Sheary from... Ohio with uh, an Ohio native, Westerville, will try to take on a bunch of lefties in a row here in Meeker, Gulikowski, Ferguson, and Webb. Let's see if we get some numbers on Austin for this summer. eventually. Maybe not. Oh well. Well, there we go. Uh, this is his fifth appearance. He made one start, 13 and a third innings, 12 strikeouts, eight walks. He's allowed 19 hits and a chopper to second. Bergeron for one on to first and Meeker able to beat the throw to reach on a fielder's choice. Good turn, too. Uh, it's just a good hustle by Meeker to get down there. Yeah, that ball just wasn't hit hard enough um, in order for that to be a double play with, um, like you mentioned, Meeker hustling to beat that out. Gulikowski takes a called strike. So one for one is Shuri against the lefty. inside. He has made three appearances this summer against the Blue Sox. He went four and a third. Allowed one run on four hits back on June 1st. Uh, foul tip by Dulikowski. And then two innings on June 4th. Allowed one hit. And two thirds of an inning on June 14th. Allowed one run on two hits. Two walks and one strikeout. Pitch misses upstairs. And every time that he has pitched against the Blue Sox, the Miners have lost. In fact, in every game that he's pitched this season, they have lost. He's the, the Miners have lost uh, nine games. He's been a part of five of them, but most of them haven't been his fault. He's only allowed Eight, eight earned runs all summer. Ball hit out into left field. Plenty of room and plenty of time for Gonzalez. He's got it two away. Hopefully that streak, five game losing streak continues with uh, games that Sherry pitches. Yeah, it's yeah, he's been coming in relief. The only start he made, he won five innings against Kokomo. Boy, he was not helped out at all 
by his by his fielders in that game. He had seven runs, but only three of them were earned. He did give up nine hits in five innings, two walks and three strikeouts. Here's a pitch to Ferguson. It's a called strike. Ferguson singled and scored in the fifth inning. It's a good move by Goddard, though. Going with his lefty here against a lefty heavy lineup. Uh, now 0-2 on Ferguson. And here's the pitch. Yeah, it's a little bit outside. Sure, he kind of got a uh, three-quarter delivery. He doesn't go over the top. It's not a very big guy. He goes pretty hard from that three-quarter angle. And Ferguson's down on strikes to end the inning. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one man left on base. We'll go to the seventh with West Virginia leading six to four. It's time for each and every one of us to face a very troubling fact. There exists a significant heroin and opioid epidemic in not only Butler County, but elsewhere across the country. I'm Rich Goldinger, the District Attorney of Butler County. This is my backyard and yours too. Together, we can work to eradicate the high-level drug dealers that supply these drugs to those using them. Heroin and opioid abuse does not discriminate. Users come from all economic backgrounds, are male and female, and may be teenagers or middle-aged adults. With your help and in conjunction with the Butler County Drug Task Force and the Pennsylvania Office of Attorney General, we can target those dealers who bring this poison into our county. Please report any suspicious activity to your local law enforcement agency, the Pennsylvania State Police, or to my office. This is our ballpark. This is our county. This is our backyard. Let's all say, not in my backyard. Please enjoy tonight's Blue Sox game. Pitcher for the Blue Sox here in the seventh, Stefan Marconja will come in. Two innings of relief earlier in the week for him. Uh, back against um, Champ, or I'm sorry, uh, Kokomo in that win the other night on uh, Thursday. First pitch to Mitchell as a bouncer. The Blue Sox trailing six to four. McCon just two and two thirds innings pitched on the summer. A little roller to first. Ferguson's there. He's on the bag. One away. That might have been a broken bat. Yeah, sounded yeah, sounded sound seven, right fielder, Sounds like a broken bat. Yeah, Marconja, he has four strikeouts in two and two thirds innings. Uh, so that's good. Not, guys miss swinging and missing, not making great contact with him. No earned runs, ERA of zero. So that's always good. The ball flared out into left field. That's a base hit. Norman's thinking two. Gun's going to fire in, and it's not in time. Double for Norman. He's come busting out of the box. That's good base running, and he's got himself now into the scoring position. Six, the designated hitter, Dan Ward. Looking for some insurance runs here late in this ballgame. Yeah. That was, I got to tell you, that's, Excellent hustle. He knew the way he hit that ball, it was gonna it was gonna die out in shallow left. And if he busted it, he, he was gonna get into second. That's exactly what he did for Dan Ward. Merconja checks second. 
And comes home. Fastball is outside. One zero -oh. is also outside. Ward has an RBI ground out, a walk, and a run scored, and a ground out to his card tonight. And he's hit three zero -oh here. With his power, do you give him the green light? Ah, uh, yeah, I would. But he's, uh, he's not even gonna give him anything. He's gonna head down to first. You don't pay him to walk, or you, well, they don't pay in this league, but you don't, you don't <laughs> employ him on your team to walk. He's, he's a guy who's supposed to drive in runs. But whenever they don't give you anything to hit, you'll gladly head down to first, and that's what, he's do that's what he does there. Nice crowd, nice night. The only thing wrong is the score. 6-4 in favor of West Virginia. And Marconja with two men on and one out will face Eddie Gonzalez, who homered back in the third inning. Bunts here, Marconja will field. Throw to, no, he's gonna eat it. And the bases are loaded. Infield single on a sacrifice attempt by Gonzalez. That was a beautiful bunt. He, yeah, I, it was. He placed that in a great spot, so honestly, I don't even, it would have worked as a sacrifice, but I think he he put it in a position where they he could have got on base, and it, it surely did work with an excellent placement on that bunt. That brings up Bergeron with the bases juice. This is the second, third time tonight that the, the Miners have had the bases loaded. And they've got one run to speak of out of it. Ground ball here will get him out of it, most likely. I was, I was just going to say, assuming there's no errors. <laughs> Or it's slowly hit or something. If it, a routine grounder will get him out of the inning. Infield playing double play depth, and the corners are in line with the bag. Ball popped up. This is playable for Ferguson and or Maglione, and one of them caught it. I'm not sure which. It's Maglione. He's got the ball. And that's a foul and a big out. Yeah, now with two outs here in the seventh, um, really any any ball hit that is playable is okay because they're not going to have to sacrifice a run. Mercon just steps off. Chad Ramsey from Missouri Baptist University, a native of Damon, Texas. Ready to go, and ball trampolines off the plate, and that will score a run. In fact, it goes into the stands. Oh, that's unfortunate. That's the first time I've seen that ever. The ball actually hit off the net and found its way underneath. That ball almost went over the net. That's how high it went. It caught off the plate in a really weird angle, and it went so high that it was just probably six inches um, from the top of the net. But they did not award the runner home that was on that was going to third. So yeah, dead ball. Yeah, he gets one base. Mm -hmm. One zero count. Seven four ball game now in favor of West Virginia. The pitch is inside. Two and zero. That's one thing here. That it seems like if it hits the plate coming down, that ball it, it must have a springboard underneath it because that ball will just take off. Yeah. A little roller to first. That's a fair ball, and Ferguson's got it to end the inning. But the Miners do get one back here. It's stretch time at Kelly Automotive Park with the right, Blue Sox down 7-4.
Elongated seventh inning stretch. <laughs> That's all I got to say. <laughs> well, Christian Webb is in a 1 1 count with Sheary here as we play the bottom of the seventh inning with the Blue Sox down 7 to 4. Webb takes a called strike. It's 1 and 2. <laughs> oh, we have Barbershop, barbershop uh, chorus go rogue down there. Yeah, they just, the ump stopped the game for a little bit, and but then they, he decided, you know what, let's let's play. Last call for alcohol. They weren't that loud. No. <laughs> and Webb's down. Number 21, second baseman, Damian. Begin the Maglione. inning. And now it's Damian Maglione, who is one for two, two RBI triple. They really got the Blue Sox going. It got him to within uh, five to four. The Miners have tacked on two runs since. Back in the end with a bunt attempt, fielded, throw to first, is in time. Good job by the third baseman, Ramsey. It was a very good play. He came up charging and made a good throw on the run in order uh, in order to get Maglione. So with two away here is Joe Gunn. Sacrifice fly. Actually, uh, Sacrifice fly to center field. This is the last time up. The two RBI triple actually made it uh, five to three. Then it, then gun sacrifice fly made it five four. The ball hit well to right field. Going back and off the wall. Gun around first, headed to second. He'll be there with a stand up double with two outs. That ball hits off of the M in Walmart in the sign. Uh, Number 10, about two one, two. one or two feet Number high, eight. and that ball's a home run. Yeah. Well hit ball, and that gives the Blue Sox a chance to try to get a little two out lightning going. At the top of the order, and Murphy, he was hit by a pitch in the fifth. Pitch inside from Sheary. This is a uh, so uh, he's he's sticking with them here. Try to get through this inning, probably to get to the setup man. We got Parks the lefty on deck, and then Scott, the right fielder, is a right-handed batter. If we can get that far, that'd be good. 3-0 the count to Murphy. A couple of miners uh, stretching out down there. Yeah, no one ready to go into the game just yet. No, nobody's thrown in the pen, but they're, they're warming up. Called strike here to Murphy. The 3-1, hard hit grounder. Oh, Cody does the splits out there at third base. The third base coach. Uh, good job of getting out of the way of that one. <laughs> it pays to be an athletic third base coach. It does. Indeed. Instead of having an, being an older man, not really able, like a guy like Clint Hurdle trying to do it. 3-2, chopper, that's a fair ball. Deep in the hole, throw down. Does not beat him. Actually, the throw beat him, but the first baseman is off the bag. Or at least he was rolled off the bag. Yeah, he's not very happy with that call. He's telling the ump that he was on the bag. He's yeah. trying to get an appeal. Give him an infield single for now. First baseman over there, Mitchell, asking for the umpire to give him an appeal. Oh, now Goddard's going to go out. He's going to have to take a bow visit. Now he's taking a detour over to the bases umpire, and he's going to ask for an appeal. I think he just wants at least the, um, the, both the umpires to get together and at least have a discussion about now, it. This usually doesn't work out well for the Blue Sox when this happens. They, I don't know if you were on with me the other night. Uh, the, the umpires deliberated about a... a uh, a call that went against the Blue Sox for about a minute and a half, two minutes, and then uh, 
it, it, it's a simple thing. It's like you don't deliberate about it. You just it, it, did you have did you have anything or not? Yeah. It, that's all they need to talk about. That's that's how it, that's what an appeal to the other umpire is supposed to be. But here we go with a discussion again. I have not marked it down on my scorebook yet because uh, you're a little more. Uh, yep, they call him safe. All right, good. All right, we got we got through that. Well, that's good. So we have runners on first and third here with two outs. Yeah, tying right at the plate in Paven Park. I would imagine uh, Murphy possibly might be uh, have the green light to st steal second at some point. He does have speed. He has five stolen bases on the season. With a lefty, though, uh, I guess, who knows? Oh, here we go. Park swings and misses at the first offering from Sheary. Got it third, Murphy at first, and Parks representing the tying run here in the bottom of the seventh. It's a 7-4 game in favor of West Virginia. Pitch low, nice job by Parks to bounce out of the way now. Murphy will take second, uh, what I would call a delayed Everybody steal. <laughs> yeah, definitely delayed steal on that. He didn't go until the ball uh, crossed the plate. Kind of like a Little League steal. <laughs> yeah, it was a Little League steal. The Little League World Series will be coming up here pretty soon. Mm -hmm. middle, yeah. middle, early August. Pitch is a called strike to Parks. Two and two, two runners in scoring position for him here. Big at bat in this game with Calvin Scott on deck. Here's the pitch, Parks strikes out. And that'll end the inning. Blue Sox leave two men, okay, and we'll go to the eighth with West Virginia leading seven to four. Ready to go here in the eighth. Blue Sox down seven to four. The eight, nine, and one hitters do up. Kristen, Callaway, and Schul. And no face, Stefan Merkonja. He's out for his second inning of work. Allowed a run last inning. On a wild pitch that scored Norman. First pitch is wide to Christen, who is 0 for 1 and has a pair of walks. First pitch, ground ball to short. Parks has it. And the throw to first is in plenty of time for the first out. Now batting number 12, the shortstop, Cody Callaway. Yeah, after that first inning where uh, we saw a little trouble from uh, Parks out in shortstop, he's been really, he hasn't made an error. He's been Building the ball pretty cleanly, making some nice plays. Yeah, ball hit pretty well to center field, but that'll hold up in the air plenty for Murphy, who's got it for the out. 
So McConjure quickly two away here. And now go to the top of the order and Shul, who is two for three and has been productive in three of his four at bats. Yeah, Marconja's doing a really good job this season, honestly, with only playing in this is his third game, but he's been the one of the better relievers for this Blue Sox team. Yeah, dual player, plays right field as well, or, well, outfield. He's been left and right and center, actually. First pitch. Is in there for a strike to Shul, but um, he's, uh, he's done a pretty good job out of the pen. Neil one. It's a little bit outside. Check the scoreboard here real quick. See how everybody else is doing. If the Blue Sox are not able to get a few runs across, West Virginia then will be tied at eight and nine after tonight. Champion City is leading Kokomo eight to three. They're a half game ahead of the Blue Sox right now. They could move a game in half ahead of both Butler and West Virginia if this result stays. Two two count here. Danville five, Quincy nothing in the bottom of the fifth. Check swing, full count. Lafayette six, Springfield one in the top of the seventh and Chillicothe five. They continue to just uh, rake to start the season. They're absolutely on fire. And Terre Haute is looking to break a four-game losing streak. Chopper to short, throw to first. Is in time. Nice throw from Parks to get the final out here in the eighth. We'll go to the bottom half with Butler down seven to four. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I will announce the Adidas scorecard winning number. Scott. Let's see if Calvin Scott can get things going here for Butler in the bottom of the eighth inning. The Blue Sox are down seven to four. Scott takes a call strike from Sheary out to work his third inning of relief. He's been he's been pretty solid out of the bullpen. Has allowed three hits, but has limited the damage every time. Got a big strike out of Paven Parks last inning. Scott with a big swing through, one and two. Well, Hugh, you gotta get on, get him over, get him in here at this point of the game. Pitch inside. Yeah, I was just gonna say that. At this point, you just wanna get on base and hope your teammates can get you in. Down by three runs, pitch inside. Even count up. No, actually makes it full, I beg your pardon. So this is the same thing Scott did earlier. He had. Uh, Five pitches didn't didn't uh, swing away. He swings through that one though. Sheary gets a strikeout, and there's now one away. The baseman, James There's James Meeker. Walk to his credit. Takes a strike here. Chopper to second. Bergeron, who hasn't had much work lately, 
Did so a lot earlier in the game. Gets the outs, 4-3. Now batting number 22, the catcher, Green Golikowski. Yeah, Bergeron's a master of how to play the turf now. Yeah. After uh, after the <laughs> Dulakowski takes high. Ben's trying to get their home team into it. But Cheery has been solid here. Dulakowski almost hit. Gets out of the way. Good, roll the ball. Three and one. <coughs> now I take ball four, head down to first. Hey, two out rally. Now batting for the Blue Sox. And that last inning. Run, the first baseman, Patrick first Two outs, in. a double, then a, a single. And it's still in base, but two runners on. So see, I'm sure Gulikowski might be on his way here. Here's Ferguson. A single and a pair of strikeouts tonight. Yeah, here's the pitch. Ooh, he wanted it, but he swings through a high fastball. He's trying to make a difference right now with this at bat. Here's the 0 1. That's right there, too, for a called strike. Ferguson in trouble. Doesn't want to get the hat trick here. No, he does not. The 0 2 is high. Ferguson actually leads the team with 23 strikeouts. That's coming into today. Yeah, he's at uh, 25 now. Yeah. Uh, ooh, good take on a curveball that broke off the plate. You'll get that a lot though. You'll see the, the bigger power guys, the they'll either make some really, really good contact. Yeah, strike or out. Strike out. Yeah. Unfortunately a hat trick tonight for Ferguson. Now, no runs, no hits, no errors, one man left. Ninth inning here. Contest of the evening, the Coming up Lee with the Blue Sox down seven. Away, guys. Thanks, Jay. We're down here with Cooper. Ryan Gray takes over on the mound for the Blue Sox, trying to hold the West Virginia Miners to a three-run lead. They lead seven to four here. Top of the ninth inning. Justin Mitchell, first guy he'll face. He's two for four tonight. Two RBIs, a triple to his credit. Ryan Gray. Just about ready to go. And here's the 
Tigers pitch. It's high for ball one. Hugh, did they win the last time you were on? Yes, they did. It was fireworks night, yes. Oh, that's right, yeah. You get to fire, you're, you're a fireworks, uh, I guess. Fireworks yeah. color guy. <laughs> <laughs> 2 0 count. Same two teams tomorrow, 135 start time. Yeah, Father's Day. Real. Yeah, Father's Day. Uh, after the game, bring your kids, take them out onto the field and play catch. Should be a, should be a good day. We got. Michael Klingen Smith on the mound for the Blue Sox as the probable, actually. And then uh, West Virginia's probable. We'll call it strike here, three and one, is Nick Dearmond. So he actually faced Butler earlier this week on Tuesday. A foul tip. And it's a 3 2 count. Yeah, Gray's job right now is just to hold him. Don't let West Virginia score any more runs, hopefully, and um, the Blue Sox will need three runs to at least tie in the bottom of the inning. Yeah, just get three outs. Yeah. <laughs> three two is to the backstop, ball four, and Mitchell will head down to first. Now batting number seven, the right fielder, Austin Norman. Austin Norman, who doubled. Uh, uh, hustle double in the seventh inning, ready to go. Another left-handed batter for the Miners. And first pitch misses high. And now Gray will go to the rosin bag. See if that rosin helps him here. Oh, ball smashed to center field and deep. That's gonna go all the way to the wall. Murphy's got to it, but not before. Uh, stand up double, and now the run coming in to score. Standing up, and it's eight to four. Mitchell in to score, and Norman on second was an RBI double. The last one was a hustle double. That was a no, muscle six, double. Yeah, he uh, he just jogged into second. He knew he was going to be safe with the runner um, ahead of him. He didn't he didn't go to third. You know why push it at this point? You're just trying to get insurance runs. Dan Ward at the plate. Battle of number sixes here. Gray misses outside. Here's the 1-0, that's inside as well. And now Golikowski go out and try to calm Gray down. Those two runs allowed in the early innings um, may not show up on the scoreboard is really affecting them, but that changes how the rest of the game goes on and uh, really is coming back to bite Butler. Yeah, they had their opportunities here. Uh, they had a tying run at third. They had two men in scoring position to cut the lead to one. Three zero is in there for a strike. A check of second by Gray, and now he'll come home, and Ward will hit it a country mile, but foul. That thing has some tail to it. <laughs> it straightens that out a little bit. Uh, last year, he was uh, late in the season. He, he hit a no-doubt home run that almost hit the light pole out in um, left field. 
I mean, it was a major league pop up that'll make it out of the stadium. It was a absolute moonshot. It was like uh, Ferguson's home run earlier this season that went up above the lights. His his it, it was like uh, you ever seen the natural? No, I have not. Uh, well, at the end of the movie, for those who haven't seen it, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, he hits a home run and all the lights go out. <laughs> That's what it felt like that ball was gonna do whenever uh, whenever it left his bat. Three two, balls popped up, and racing in is Murphy. Makes the catch for the second out, that, or for the first out. I beg your pardon. That ball was up there a long time. That helped out because okay, Murphy was playing deep, knowing the power that. Ward has, but he was able to get the get the out, and that's a big first out. Yeah, that ball's so high. I actually, I lost it. I I didn't see where it went. I knew it was going to center, and I knew it was catchable, but it was very high. So here's Gonzalez. He homered back in the third inning. And the pitch is in there for a called strike. Way. I don't think there's anyone warming up, honestly, at this point. Yeah, there is somebody warming there up. Is? I can see him. From uh, here. Okay. I don't Did know who it is, but I can see uh, a pitcher throwing. Relief pitchers are hard to hard to find at this point of the of the season when uh, when you have guys throwing uh, one, two, three. This is the fourth pitcher today. Plus, you have to plan ahead, and you have to go from games prior. Well, yeah, and pitch is low to Gonzalez. And we're, we're short three now because of the draft. Uh, three guys that we were hoping to bring into the fold are now going to go on to pro ball. Pitch low ball four, and... There is two men on with one out. Second walk of the inning by Gray. In retrospective, though, I mean, every team in the league is going to have players that they have uh, that get drafted and they won't be coming or they'll be leaving the team. So, um, Josh Forbes is headed out to – he signaled to the bullpen. I, no, no, he didn't. He's going out to talk to, he told Maglione to get out of there. He wants to have a heart to heart here. Pat on the back and now head back in. Hey, go ahead, uh, Brian, or uh, uh, Hugh, I'm sorry, what were you saying? Uh, just how everyone has uh, the players that will get drafted. So it's kind of depending on the skill level of the players and the year. Um, not an even playing field, but it happens to everyone. Yeah, we we definitely got hit the hardest. Yeah, really. Of any team, uh, uh, Champion City had a pitcher drafted in the fifth round that was on the roster. Pitch high here, and um, a couple other teams. Uh, West Virginia had a few guys that were uh, from previous teams that were drafted, including uh, Jake Belinda in the tenth round. Uh, uh, Zach Steary. There's another one. One one count here with uh, Bergeron. And Grady will deliver outside. Free hot dogs. Oh. They should show us some love. Yeah. We're probably not going to get that lucky. It's called strike two and two. I'm actually getting pretty hungry, too. Yeah. I would have gladly taken one of them. <laughs> but hey, the fans take them. Foul ball. Hard hit foul ball. Uh, Bergeron.
Same two teams tomorrow, 135 start time for Father's Day. Blue Sox and last chance to see them until next Thursday when the paints come to town for the first time. Uh, ground ball through the hole for a base hit. They will wave, don't hold the runner. And the bases are loaded. Good throw by Gunn. Uh, so if he would have, the runner would have gone, I think he probably would have been out. Yeah, that was a good now throw by Joe the Gunn out there in the left. There's Chad Ramsey. He is over on the night, but has been on base twice. One of the few miners, actually the bottom of the order, of the, although um, Dan Ward hasn't had a hit yet either, but he's been on base a couple times. Ball to the backstop, but nobody advances here. Bases loaded yet again yeah, for four, the Miners. Fourth time tonight the Miners have had the bases loaded. So far they've scored two runs in that in the first in the first three times. Two total runs. Gray gets a ground ball here. He can get out of this thing. And here's the pitch. It's a bit low. Two and oh, Ooh, foul ball in the way. Got his foot. Yeah, he's walking it off. Never a good feeling. No. What do you think of the camo green gray combo? Yeah. I'm not a big fan. <laughs> I like. I mean, the camo isn't bad. It's just the green. I think if there was another color, I don't know. Two one. This is a bit outside. The. Kings before they redesigned their logo or uniforms last season, they had a blue and tan camo, and it was one of the ugliest things I've ever seen. Three one popped up in the center field. Murphy doesn't see it. He doesn't see it, and it's over his head. He lost it in the lights, and two runs are going to come in. No, oh, he's out. Oh no, he's safe. It looked like he was out, but he's safe and he's hurt. Gonzalez is hurt. I think he uh, ran into his teammate. I believe that. Oh, well, he was he safe. I think he rolled his ankle. Gonzalez. He's up. He's going to walk it off. That's a good sign. To s two runs come in on that. that it, it's, a, it's a single for Ramsey, a two RBI yeah, single. Jeffrey and it's now 10-4 Miners. Coming in to score is Norman and then Gonzalez. Unfortunately, he looked like he rolled an ankle as he crossed the plate. He was tripped by the mitt of Gulikowski. Yeah, it was a very close play. Gulikowski was able to apply the tag, but by that point, Gonzalez, his foot was already on the bag. The ball fouled off. Still with only one out here in the ninth inning. Murphy just lost that one of lights. Nothing he can do about that. That's just bad luck. He put his arms up right away. I knew he didn't have it. And he come in and it was going the other way. A foul ball here. Runners were off on the pitch, but now they'll have to head back. No two count on Christen. One of two miners not to, or no, he did reach base. He's reached base twice. There's only, uh, Callaway has not reached base. That's it. Everybody else has. That's why they have 10 runs and 11 hits. Yeah. Now ball to center field again. Murphy doesn't see it. It's way over his head anyways. He wasn't getting to that ball. It's all the way to the 425 sign in center. And the miners are going to score two more here on a two RBI double by Christen. It's now a dozen to four. Yeah, here, uh, not Murphy with uh, not seeing the ball, that really uh, didn't stop that from being a hit. No, uh, it could have stopped possibly runs. Uh, possibly depends on how fast he would have got to that ball, being that he just was frozen for a little bit. But uh, at this point of the game, uh, I don't know.
And that's going to be it for Gray. His line tonight is not going to be pretty. He goes, he gives up five runs. He recorded an out on four hits. Walked two and did not strike out any. He is actually responsible for Kristen, too. And it looks like Ray Gonzalez is going to come out of the bullpen and try to get a couple outs here. And mercifully gets his hitting over with. Five, five runs across already. I will announce the winning number. That winning number is three seven four one four four eight. That's three seven four one four eight. Gonzalez on the four four has three games. Um, five innings. He has pitch allowed. Six hits. ERA three point six. Five strikeouts. So these bullpen guys. Uh, they have pretty, again, pretty decent three, ERAs. Seven, four, but, uh, yeah, one, for a catcher. Four, yeah, four, it's doing pretty good. <laughs> uh, Gonzalez from North Florida, native of Orlando. Trying to get two outs here and get us out of this thing. He's got Callaway and Schul, the eighth and ninth men, to come up this inning. Do up. Don't forget tomorrow, the Butler Blue Sox will be taking on the West Virginia Miners and tomorrow. It's kids autograph day here. The fans obviously not happy with the what will be outcome of this game unless there's a, a great rally in the bottom of the ninth from the Blue Sox, but uh, they will be able to watch some fireworks after the game, so that's always a plus. Yeah, at least they get some fireworks after this. On the field after the game. I tell you, it's warm out tonight. And you, yeah, we know that from being out here, but if you can't tell if you're sitting at home watching the game, look at the umpire shirts. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 the darker colors. shade of blue in most spots. Yeah. <laughs> once that's once the, once the sun went down, it was a. It's been better, but obviously it's, it's still, still real, hot. Real sticky. Yeah, real humid. My hands are pretty pretty I sticky. I feel like my shirt uh -huh. sticking to me. But, hey, there's a lot worse things we could be doing right now. Any day I will take hot, hot over cold. That's just me, though. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I can't stand the snow. I need to move somewhere south. <laughs> yeah, I absolutely hate snow. The only day I like to see snow is on Christmas. That's it. <laughs> now we're uh, Cody's coming out to talk about something here. All right, well, didn't seem like a heated discussion. No, no, time called. What we got going on here? I don't know if this is talking about substitutions or I'm not really sure. Nothing too brutal. I don't think anyone's really angry. All right, well, whatever it was, it's over. Back to baseball. Gonzalez checks second, comes home. Swing and a miss by Callaway. Looking to break the streak. He's the only guy who hasn't reached base at this point. Go for four. Two ground outs, a fly out, and a strikeout. Chopper off the foot. Oh, that hurts. Seen that a couple times today. Yeah. The umpire letting Callaway take a little time, walk it off, yeah. get, get the feeling back. Yeah, jumping up and down. Gonzalez got him 0-2 here. And pitch misses upstairs. He is the fifth pitcher of the night for the Blue Sox. Now foul ball. This inning feels like it's taken about a year. 
Yeah. You're right. When it gets towards the end of the, end of the game, usually, th at least this season, um, the game, the ninth inning has been one of the longer innings. Uh, swing and a miss. Gonzalez gets Callaway to strike out for the second out here. Now the ninth man to come to the plate, Shul. Will get in the box. Kokomo down 8-3 to Champion Z in the top of the ninth. Quincy down 5-4 to Danville in Danville in the top of the seventh. In the top of the ninth, it's Chillicothe 5, Terre Haute 3. And Lafayette 7, Springfield 1 in the top of the eighth. Pitch misses to Shul. And here's the 1 0. And it's a little bit outside as well. At this point, as a pitcher, you just need to find the zone and really rely on your defense to make the plays. 2 0 delivery. Oh, nice pitch and a swing through. Well, the Miners have been efficient tonight. 12 runs on 12 hits. They've taken the most of the times they've been on base. Yeah, swing through by Shaw. It's now two and two. He kind of looked out at Ray as if to say, well, where'd this guy come from? <laughs> Pretty good for a guy who spends most of his time receiving pitchers yeah. as a catcher. Swing and a miss, strike three. That'll end the inning. And the, but the Miners have put some padding on their lead. Five runs come across and we'll go to the bottom of the ninth, last chance for the Blue Sox. They're down 12 to four. Everyone's favorite part of the week is Thursday because that means it's Thirsty Thursday. Come out to Kelly Automotive Park each Thursday to support your favorite hometown team, the Butler Blue Sox, and enjoy our special concession prices, including $1 draft beers and 50 cent pops. Tickets start at just $7 and can be purchased online at butlerbluesox.net and or by phone at 724-256-9994. Let's go Blue Sox. Austin Sheary out to pitch the ninth inning. He's looking for a, a four inning save here, even though it's 12 to four. Oh no, it's only eight runs, so yeah. Four innings, he could pick up a save here. Nyland on the night is in line for the win. He went five innings allowed, four runs, and they were all earned. Christian Webb takes a strike from Sheary. Here's the pitch. Webb takes strike two. Maglione and Gunn will follow. Pitch outside. Sh Sheary's working really fast this inning. Yeah, he's just trying to get through this, I think. With an eight run lead, why, why wait around? His, his delivery is really weird. It's like he doesn't fully extend his arm. He just like keeps his elbow closed, if that makes sense. Foul ball out of play. Yeah, it's a little herky-jerky. Yeah. But it's effective. Mm-hmm. 
clearly, yeah. I, I thought at first he was like a three-quarter, but he's kind of coming over the top. But he's not, like you said, he's not finishing, so it looks like he drops down a little yeah. bit. Yeah. And Webb strikes out to yeah, begin the bottom of the night. Yeah, here's Maglione. He had a two RBI triple back in the fifth. That was about the highlight of the night for the Blue Sox. Yeah. Yeah, Spider joining us in the booth here. A goofy looking one nonetheless. It's like, it's like yellow. With antennas. Yeah. He look, he blends in with the railing in front of us. Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, now the attendance is like 1,002. Yeah. This spider now mm -hmm. making his way here. Anyone's welcome here <laughs> at a Blue Sox game. <laughs> yeah. We won't turn anybody away. 1-1 one, one count. We're Maglione. One out here in the bottom of the ninth. Blue Sox needing... A minor miracle, that, that'll work. That's a base, well, that's gonna be at least two for Maglione. He's hard out of the box. He'll get the second and he will stay put. No chance, of, no point in trying to risk three there. And Maglione with another extra base hit. He's got two on the night. That was real nice, it just went inside the third base bag and then went in the foul territory. Um, that was a really nice, nice hit. Joe Gunn takes a called strike. Gunn doubled in the seventh inning off the Walmart sign in right center. The you know, one almost that did hit him. Yeah, now two men on. I think that got a little bit of the catcher as well, I think. Yeah. It cha changed directions. Yeah, um, sure. umpire goes out, gives the, walks out to the pitcher, gives him a ball just to, you know, let uh, Chris and just shake it off. Yeah, he set up outside, and after that deflected off a gun. Really didn't have an opportunity to get out of the way, and it no. did clip him. Right, one out, two men on. Blue Sox will have to bring home a small village if they want to tie this thing. They're down 12 4. Ball popped up. And heads up. Oh, it hits off the dugout and goes up into the general mission. Just a strike. And oh yeah. Not, an, not as an eventful one as it could have been. As all the all the kids from field level are rushing up here to general admission to try to find that ball. Yeah, every kid in attendance. Yeah. Oh, another one. That one's gonna make it out into the street. Now they're one two is low. And so Murphy stays alive here. Trying to get a base hit, trying to keep this thing going. And now ground ball to short. This could end it. Six four throws high, so it'll be safe at first. Good hustle by Murphy, too, to get there. And Magdalene will move to third. Two down for Parks. Sherry's really not worried about that runner at all. He's just focused on getting one out. Uh, he has many batters <laughs> uh, that he could face with, with allowing runs, and he's still in good shape. Jerry struck out Parks in the last time these two 
We're up against each other. First pitch is a called strike. Now Parks hits at the center field and fairly well. And that ball is off the wall and that will score a pair. Parks is on his way to third and he'll be there with a stand-up triple. It's 12 to six. Little two hour rally. That, uh, that triple, he, he needed that. He was kind of struggling today with two strikeouts and uh, two ground outs. Uh, that, that he really needed that. He caught the ball out there. That's, that's the only thing I can. Uh, he did catch the ball out there. Game's over. 4 4 is the final score. Well, had to. I that's guess. the only thing I can think of. This has been a very, very questionable game with calls. All right. So uh, that's about right for the way this thing. Um, gonna give the left fielder that catch? What the heck? Why not? It's been a weird night. It has not gone Butler's way, and it's over finally. Thank goodness. Tomorrow's a new day. Yeah, don't we'll get to play tomorrow at 1:35. Uh, still waiting on an official final score, but I believe it's 12 to four. All right, so. Ladies and gentlemen, the call is the runner ran, overran third base, and he was called out. Okay. I did not see that either. 12-6 12, 12, final. He overran third base, is that what? Yeah, he got tagged. Okay, so. Uh, that's the first time in a long time I've been tongue-tied at the end of a game like this. Eight-five put out. Okay, so anyway, it's final score twelve-six tonight. Not the Blue Sox tonight. Not really much to recap. Uh, beginning in the fifth, but this is when you just turn the page and go on to the next day. Yeah, that was all. Uh, that, like you said in the fifth inning, that was really the production. Aside from that triple from Haven Park that happened a couple minutes ago. Other than that, the fifth inning was really the only sign of life for the Blue Sox. Seven, All right, well, final score tonight, 12-6. West Virginia five, wins it. Four, they both, both teams are now 8-9 on the summer. Two, Tomorrow, 135, one. we got... Father's Day here, and we got um, Mike Klingensmith on the hill for the Blue Sox, Big Dearmont for the West Virginia Miners. Thanks for listening tonight. For my broadcast partner, Hugh O'Neill, for my producer, Allison Schubert. Final score one last time, West Virginia 12, Butler 6. Thanks for tuning in. We'll do it tomorrow afternoon.